I'm gonna go to the wood pile and get the axe. I'm gonna go into the cabin, get the grab bags by the door, and then we'll wait back in the car and we'll reverse. Okay, reverse, go to the wood pile, go back to the door, get the gold bags, get outside, and we'll take the other. Are you listening or are you repeating? Can't you go to the axe? No, just, just one more time. When I was watching this movie, the news broke that Ruth Bader Ginsburg had died, so I was feeling especially despondent. <laughs> um, but I do think that there's some hopefulness to this. I mean, without giving anything away, it made me feel good. I want to say that. <laughs> there's some depths you were living in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What can we learn from this? Is there any hopefulness for our current terrible situation that we can maybe walk away from this movie feeling better about? <laughs> the takeaway uh, from the script and when reading the script, it's this like brilliant large scale premise, but it is about these these two in the nitty gritty of the end of the world. And like, they're all they have and pe people are all we have. So it's like, in some ways it's a <laughs> complete limitation, but in other ways it's like so uh, empowering and in a way, and like, you know, to feel good that you you can rely on like real support is, is a gift. There are two people that are so seemingly inept and they survived so long. Can you believe it? Yeah. So long. Yeah. And I guess, you know, the whole reason they went into the woods was uh, to sort of better themselves and change the things that they felt insecure about. And in a way they do, you know, Sue gets to yeah. let go and then Jack gets to um, sort of play the hero for one moment and then get attacked immediately. So. <laughs> Yes, yeah. there's hope for people without any discernible skill set. And I needed to see that message. I need to see that <laughs> representation for sure. <laughs> Sam, maybe I should watch the movie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I've seen it. We are going offline for one whole week. I would love to do something tangible. I want to figure out who I am. But we will be back June 9th. No laptops, no phones, no connecting to anything. Thank you. I, I know that the, the film's writer-director is Alex and Eleanor are a real-life couple, so was there an element of, you know, by you guys stepping into these roles, playing a couple that they wrote, did it feel like you were helping them work through some of their stuff? <laughs> well, full disclosure, Sorry. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a little bit of uh, that that is present because it's so clear that it's based off of them and... Uh, you know, Sunitha knew them better previous to the, or prior to the experience. But um, I guess the silver lining of that is also they're like genuinely very like sweet and kind, good people. So uh, that was to keep it positive. And knowing them, yeah, did it, did it feel like you were playing kind of maybe facets of them in, through these characters? I loved absorbing that yeah. on set and then um, just like taking it in and then just like sending it all into John <laughs> into a seed. Like, I think that that built a lot of like connection between us. Um, just having that dynamic right alongside us, the, the whole movie, you know? Um, and I loved seeing Alex and Eleanor in a different capacity. Like I had never seen them working together in that way. I knew them as uh like a couple dear friends of mine who like helped me make my wedding dreams come true. Like it was, they, they're very deep friends of mine. And then on set, there was like almost this like weird reserve and respect of like, no, you are, your directors. And I, I'm, I'm an actor. Like, please, I wouldn't want to infringe on anything disrespectfully by like having this shorthand or something. Like we just knew we had it. And then, you know, we just, were like playing our roles, which I thought I thought worked for first time, like being a lead in their first movie. And like, it was good to sort of have that, <laughs> those boundaries or something. What is that? Has this been here the whole time? The poof? I don't know, probably. Oh my God. What the? So I also wanted to ask about the poofs. What's their deal? How are they to work with? <laughs> What's are their they, deal? What's their deal? What's their vibe? Yeah. yeah. Like, are they chill? Like, What are they obsessed <laughs> with? <laughs> well, they're obsessed they're... with us. They're obsessed with ethanol. Um, but they uh, are practical effects, so they're real. They were on set. They're the real deal. 
yeah there were uh, a bunch of different types of poops you know one that was on a remote control car there was one that had like a tongue that moved on some weird wires that this guy called there was moving around uh there was a lot of fake slime um so you know from our standpoint it was fun to act with them to have something like physically there and then also just as a fan of movies it was fun to see some old school movie making like put into effect so <laughs> absolutely it was like supreme when they were on set because so much of the movie is me and john our co-stars were like uh i, I don't want to give it away but there are like <laughs> two other co-stars one of them being a poof and I'll say they're both just like precious beings <laughs> who come into play. So it was like they were the, the divas like on set where it was like, okay, well, yeah, I'd like a break, but that's fine. <laughs> right. We can keep going because the poop is ready. That's fine. They sure. were like over pampered, you know, <laughs> there was, we were waiting to shoot some scenes and the poop was getting its hair brushed and I, it's, I'm <laughs> yeah. not joking. <laughs> it's yeah. like, right, right. It looks fine. Let's shoot this. Poof is in the cabin. Poof on the couch. Poof on the roof. What? Poof on the roof. 